I'm not gonna lie, this one hit differently because Keller was very influential in my life and very influential for this channel. If you haven't heard, pastor, theologian, and apologist Tim Keller has unfortunately passed away today after an almost three year battle with pancreatic cancer. Now, if you're familiar with Keller's work and you watch my channel, then you might know that without a doubt, Keller has been one of my biggest influences when it comes to my work and the approach that I take on this channel. Without his work, I don't even think I'd have this channel today. We'll come back to that. But just a couple of months ago, in what I believe was his final interview before his death, he was being interviewed by Justin Briley about his health. And he said a couple of things in that interview that really stuck with me. Here's the first one. I would say <clears throat> at least twice a day, I pray for healing, complete healing. Even though my doctor told me there is no cure, Mm. for pancreatic stage four once it's out there you'll die of it i've been praying for healing mm. um god can do it or he doesn't have to do it i mean this is years and years of experience with him when i look back on things that he did for me that at the time i thought were awful but now i realize we're actually good for me it's just years of experience i say look he knows mm -hmm. i mean that may sound a little too easy for those of you who are saying no 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 i can't die yet um i mean i'm not i'm not young with children still at home and i think that is really really tough on the other hand when i got this cancer diagnosis i was 69 years old i remember kathy and i looked at each other and said we thought we'd feel a lot older when we got to 69. we always thought we'd feel like hey you know my life's over mm. no 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 so uh, it, it's not like we haven't struggled but i think in the, the just years of experiences the lord he knoweth mm. And uh, I can't possibly be sure he knows. So, I, I mean, ultimately, I'm praying for healing. And just the fact that I, I may not get that is, yeah. is something that I have say, okay, God knows. Mm. Now, what really stuck out to me about this clip was not only did he approach death by praying for healing while also trusting in God's sovereignty, but he also spoke about how when we're younger, we often think that once we get to the age of 70, then we'll be old enough and ready to die. But we don't feel that way when the time actually comes. Now, even though there were things that he wished he knew earlier, it seems as though he was content with how the end of his life was approaching. For example, I went to his Twitter this morning to look for an update on his health. And as I started reading his most recent tweet, my assistant text me and told me that he passed away. Of course, I was shocked, but then I thought about how this tweet was reflective to his mindset before he died. The tweet was posted just hours before his death, and it was written by his son, who said, Today, dad is being discharged from the hospital to receive hospice care at home. Over the past few days, he has access to pray with them often. He expressed many times through prayer his desire to go home to be with Jesus. His family is very sad because we all wanted more time, but we know that he has very little at this point. In prayer, he said two nights ago, I'm thankful for all the people who've prayed for me over the years. I'm thankful for my family that loves me. I'm thankful for the time that God has given me, but I'm ready to see Jesus. I can't wait to see Jesus. Send me home. Keller lived a great life of exceptional work that so many people, including myself, have benefited immensely from. Lots of the things that you like about this channel are probably things that were directly influenced by his work. For example, one thing that I always loved about his work was the fact that he would always find a way to bring everything back to the gospel, something that, as you know, I try to do in all of my videos. He had a gospel-centric approach no matter what he was talking about, and this inspired me to try to do the same when it comes to the cultural events that I talk about. Not only did he help me personally to understand the nature of grace being a free gift, but he also helped me to think about the implications that came from that incredibly important truth. He also helped to explain what it looks like to have Christ at the top of our lives and what a life characterized by the gospel message looks like. From the centrality of the gospel message to the approach I take to how I understand and interact with culture, all of these things were directly influenced by and were built off of the work that he had already done. So I'm incredibly thankful for his work and his contribution to how Christians can share the gospel to a postmodern generation. Of course, we're sad that he's no longer here with us, but we also don't grieve as those without hope. Instead, we rejoice in knowing that, as Keller actually talked about so many times, that just as Christ was raised, we too will be raised in him. In the end, we should thank our Lord for the life and work of Tim Keller and pray that God will continue to use those of us that are still here to continue where he left off. And after seeing Keller having experienced a life so well lived, I hope that you and me both 
both can strive to do our best to live the rest of our lives as a testament to the matchless grace that God has for all of us in Christ. And if you personally have been impacted by Keller's work, go ahead and let us know how he impacted your life down below. And lastly, of course, pray for his family and also keep an eye out for any way that we can help them during this time. All right. See you soon, meme team.